Hello, my lovely anatomy and physiologists. Let's continue our conversation on the integumentary system. We left off talking about sebaceous glands, so let's talk next about sweat glands. Now we have two important types of sweat glands to discuss. We have what's called the eccrine sweat gland, and then we have the apocrine sweat gland. Now the eccrine sweat gland we'll see is producing a secretion that's mostly water. So mostly water. We also see some electrolytes, so some salts, some ions. And then we get some antibodies. And we get some traces of metabolic waste. So there's a little bit of an excretory function that's happening with the eccrine sweat gland. This is why um, certain diets or certain medicines or street drugs can affect the way the sweat smells. One of the components of the eccrine sweat secretion is called dermacidin. Dermacidin. No E on the end. And dermacidin is going to be an antibacterial peptide. So dermacidin is this antibacterial peptide that's secreted in the eccrine sweat secretions. So we're seeing that it has the job of evaporative cooling, or what we can call sensible perspiration. So it's cooling the body. It's making the skin kind of moist, and this is making it harder for pathogens to adhere and penetrate into the body. Plus, we have dermacidin in that secretion. So by kind of washing the surface of the body and washing it with dermacidin, this is important in preventing pathogenic invasion. And then um, along with that, we have a little bit of that excretory function. So those would be like the jobs of the eccrine sweat gland, the evaporative cooling, which we can call sensible perspiration, um, the antibacterial or pathogenic protections, and then also the excretory function. When we look at where the eccrine sweat glands are located, they are going to be widespread across the body, and they're going to be the highest concentration on the palms of your hands and the soles of your feet. And if you think about it, these are the places where we are most likely to contact with our environment. And so it's nice that these areas are actively being washed with this dermacidin eccrine sweat secretion. Let's just do a little aside over here. I do think I've mentioned this in previous talk, but I want to make sure we have defined what's called insensible perspiration. Insensible means outside of our sensory awareness, and we're losing about 500 milliliters of water a day across our cutaneous membrane. This is just water loss that's happening across the skin. So remember, the skin is not like a waterproof. It's more like water resistant. And again, outside of our sensory awareness. So this is not the moisture that, you know, makes your armpit sweaty and you can feel on your skin and so forth. Okay, looking across the aisle here, we have our other type of sweat gland, which is called the apocrine sweat gland. And here I like to think about this using the memory device, apocrine appears at puberty. 
And so what we see here again, it's that signaling of those sex hormones, estrogens and testosterones that really activate our apocrine sweat glands. And so we'll see these highest concentration in the armpits and groin area. So we see this at highest concentration in the armpits and the groin area. So think of those places that really change with the onset of puberty. And then we can also talk about these as being more associated with hair follicles, whereas the eccrine are just located widespread across the body, not associated with a hair follicle. We'll see that this secretion is going to be water, it's going to have salt or electrolytes, and it's going to have some organic compounds that bacteria metabolize. I'm making a mess of my screen, so let me rewrite. And it is this breakdown of that organic material from these bacteria that produces body odor. And so actually one of the jobs of the apocrine sweat gland is olfactory communication. So this is talking about like human pheromones. This is kind of not super well understood, I think in part, you know, because we like to pretend we're not animals and we play by different rules um, as like our puppy dog. Um, but there is still this component to our physiology. Because we see it coming with the onset of puberty, we do see that this is controlled by then the nervous an endocrine system. So again, that's saying hormonal control, which we've already mentioned. And then um, our infant's textbook talks about how aluminum-based antiperspirants work by using an aluminum in the antiperspirant that when it contacts with their skin, the pH actually changes it so that it precipitates or becomes solid. And then that actually um, makes a physical block in that apocrine sweat gland. And so that's the reason that an antiperspirant is keeping you dry, which I think is a pretty interesting. All right, y'all, a few videos left to finish up chapter five. So stick with it. And as always, take care of yourselves and each other.